uh, or you can put uh, your question in the chat box. Right, so I'll share the screen right now. Okay, uh, so this week, okay, okay, this, uh, this, uh, this should be your, your 12th week. Uh, so we will learn some things that related to temperature and heat. Okay, temperature and heat. So in this chapter, we will, we will cover um, the zeroth law of the thermodynamics. Okay, the, the, what is the zeroth law of the thermodynamics? Okay. The scales, temperature scale, I think this one you, you already know about uh, how uh, you want to establish your temperature in terms of Celsius, okay, Fahrenheit, and also Kelvin. Okay, in the thermal expansion, this one is a bit new to you. So you will learn some things that are related to thermal expansion where you give heat. So what will happen to the metals, uh, so, uh, liquid, and also gas. And, and the, the last part uh, will be the specific heats. Okay, I think you you also ha have learned uh, these things uh, in your secondary schools. Okay, about specific heats. Okay, especially for the specific heat capacity, the MC theta whatsoever. And we will continue uh, the chapters to the uh, in the next slide, which also contribute. Uh, uh, part of the specificity which is the latent heat. Okay, latent heat. Okay, so for the temperature and the zeroth law of the thermodynamics. Okay, the zeroth law of the thermodynamics. So first is the definitions of heat. Okay, definitions of heat. Uh, heat is the energy transfer. Okay, when you talk about heat, okay, it's about energy. Okay, energy. So this is the keywords for the heat. I mean the energy. So you know the energy when you have uh, when you talk about energy. Okay, you must always relate it to joule. So that's why heat also have unit joule. Okay, transferred between objects because of the difference in temperature. So uh, the energy can be transferred between objects because of the difference in temperature. Okay, what does it mean by difference in temperature? So, for example, you have 30 degrees Celsius and also a 10 degrees Celsius. So, when you combine, okay, uh, 30 and also 10, so it will reach until uh, it reach the thermal equilibrium. Okay, so we'll see afterwards what is the thermal equilibrium. So, and of course, okay, uh, the rules of the, the the energy can be transferred uh, when the objects are in thermal contact okay energy can be transferred when uh, the object are in thermal contact so they can listen sentuh okay cara sentuh macam mana kita kena tengok lah so uh, in thermal contact if heat can flow between them so that's why heat can flow between object when there is a thermal contact Okay, when the transfer of heat between objects in thermal contact ceases, they are in thermal equilibrium. So, make this thing work. Okay, look at the, uh, uh, how uh, they present the heat, the thermal contact. So, um, heat, a uh, thermal contact, and thermal equilibrium are the keywords for the zeroth law of the thermodynamics. Okay. Okay, so uh, as I said to you, there's the keywords for the zeroth law. Okay, zeroth law, eh? kosong law yang ke law yang yang tidak ada nombor. Eh? The zeroth law of the thermodynamics. Okay, if object A is in thermal equilibrium with object B, and object C is also in thermal equilibrium with object A, then object A and object C will be in thermal equilibrium if brought into thermal contact. Easy. Okay, A dengan B, okay, if A and B uh, have a thermal equilibrium, what does it mean by thermal equilibrium? Okay, easy to understand that. If you have 30 degrees Celsius for B and 10 degrees Celsius for A, then uh, the temperature at uh, 30 degrees Celsius will uh, comes down until it reach one uh, a possible uh, thermal uh, uh, temperature and the 10 degrees Celsius will reach okay to try will increase 
its energy and then it will reach a uh, one uh, temperature so let's say if i say uh let's say the temp the, the temperature will be 20 okay so the 20 degrees Celsius is called thermal equilibrium okay uh, the temperature is only a factor that determines whether the two objects is in thermal contact are in thermal equilibrium or not okay so easy to understand all right so therefore okay we, uh, we should right now look at the temperature scales okay temperature scales are usually will use a celsius scale okay so uh, i mean i think many of you will know that the water freeze at zero celsius zero degree celsius a pure water okay this one is a pure water okay pure and water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, we know that uh, when we, uh, especially when we have a tap water, so definitely it will have uh, uh, impurities, some impurities. Uh, maksudnya ada benda sing uh, pada water tu. If there is not a pure water, then it will not reach uh, its uh, this temperature. Okay, mm -hmm. so if you want to get a 100 degrees Celsius on, on or, or or freeze at zero degrees Celsius, so you must use a pure water, okay, without impurities. And what happened? Uh, we usually use a Celsius scale instead of a Fahrenheit scale. Uh, in Malaysia, we use a, a Celsius scale. So this part is Malaysia uh, and all around the world. So, okay, there is part of uh, another world. Uh, part of the world also use a Celsius scale, but uh, there is also part of the world that will use a Fahrenheit scale, especially in US, okay, they will use uh, a Fahrenheit scale. Okay, so look at the uh, uh, temperature uh, and look at the, how they present. Huh? Uh, if the water freeze at zero degrees Celsius, okay, the water also freeze at 32 degree Fahrenheit. It's a bit higher compared to Celsius. And the water will boil at 212 Fahrenheit, degree Fahrenheit. Okay, look at the, how they present 100, 100 degree Celsius. This is called degree. Okay, and this is the uh, scale or the unit. Okay, scale or unit. Okay. Or maybe you need right and look how they present themselves at 32 degree Fahrenheit is equivalent to zero degree Celsius. So there must be some uh, conversions between Fahrenheit and scale. So we may look at this. So how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit? So uh, let's say you want to convert celsius celsius normally will come in a, in a quite a smaller value uh unit okay small quite a small a very quite a small value unit so meaning that if you look at the difference between celsius and fahrenheit fahrenheit is a bit um uh, have a bigger number okay let's say uh, you can compare to uh, uh water balls at, uh, at what is at zero degree celsius so fahrenheit zero and for the Fahrenheit, uh, for the Celsius zero to a bit, okay, uh, higher than Celsius. So without, uh, uh, without uh, thinking about the the units, we should know how to convert between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And at that, at the same time, we should know how to convert between Fahrenheit and Celsius. Okay, so Fahrenheit Celsius is always uh, uh, it's just a matter of a region use regional use. Okay, so maybe in Malaysia we use Celsius in in in, in the US and maybe they will use Fahrenheit. It's just a number, but in terms of the degree or or the energy use is still the same. Okay, it's still the same, right? So how to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit? So we we'll use so let's say if you have a temperature in uh, temperature uh, you want to get the Fahrenheit temperature okay this one is the Fahrenheit temperature Fahrenheit okay TF F stands for Fahrenheit so 9 over 5 so you put your temperature of Celsius over here so this one is for temperature is Celsius yeah you look at the C and plus with 32 plus with 32 so in the end you will get a uh, value with the Fahrenheit value 
And if you want to get in the Celsius, then okay, so five over nine, the TF minus thirty two. Tf minus 32, meaning that this is the temperature of the Fahrenheit, and this is if you want to get the temperature in Celsius, this one in degree Fahrenheit. Okay, so in the end, you will get okay, a value in Celsius. So, get to know the, the conversions. Okay. Alright. So, this is the examples of the temperature conversions. Okay, uh, uh, on a fine spring day, you notice that the temperature is 75 degrees Fahrenheit. What is the corresponding temperature on the Celsius scale? So what is the corresponding? So it's easy. Uh, look at here. Okay, we use, okay, 5 over 9, okay, 75.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, 5 over 9, 75 minus 32. So you must minus first, then you can multiply with the 5 over 9 to get 24 degrees Celsius. Okay, so if the temperature on a breeze winter morning is negative 2 uh, degrees Celsius, so what happens if the temperature is negative? Then just easily put the negative value over here like this. Okay, because uh, if you want to change the temperature, uh, the, the scales from Celsius to over 5 okay, times with negative 2 plus with 30, so you have to multiply first multiply the value that you have you can plus okay but apart from this uh, if you want to get the temperature in Celsius then you minus first then you multiply with 5 over 9 okay okay you can try it on your own so this is the absolute zero okay what is absolute zero Right, so uh, the, the pressure in the gas is proportional to its temperature, okay? Uh, I, what can I say is, um, when you look at the uh, pressure versus graph, this is pressure, uh, pressure P versus temperature, okay? You can see that when the pressure is increased, okay, when the pressure is increased, then the temperature is also increased. So uh, pressure increase, temperature also increase. So at the moment, that is the uh, pattern of the graph. Okay, so you can look at the gas number one, gas number two, and gas number three. All will follow this part, which means when you increase the pressure, the temperature is also increased. Okay, but to, in order to get to know the absolute zero, we want to know what is absolute zero. So, uh. We will try to extrapolate. Okay, this is the part where we call it as extrapolations. Extrapolations. Okay, extrapolate. Kita akan manipulate graph ini. And how can we do that? So we extend. Okay, we extend the graph. We will extend down to a zero pressure. Okay. So if we want to know what happened if the pressure is zero. So you can look here at gas number one, number two, and number three. When the, when the temperature is zero, okay, look at the where the temperature is zero. Here, here is the temperature zero. Okay, you can still have pressure at gas number one, gas number two, and gas number three. So we want to know where does uh, where does the temperature will be when the pressure is absolute zero? So when we talk about absolute zero, it's actually when the pressure zero. Okay, when the pressure is zero, so what happened to the temperature? So in every every gas, when we try it on every gas, and they try to uh, do some experimental value, uh, during the experimental value, okay, Sorry, during the experimental session, so they, uh, from gas number one and gas number two and gas number three, all gases, okay, all gases, okay, will come to at one temperature and only one temperature, okay. When the pressure is zero, when the pressure is zero, the temperature will fall to negative 273.15. Celsius, degree Celsius. So this is the part where we actually get pressure equals to zero. So this 
Okay, okay extrapolate the graph until it reach a one point. That is equivalent to negative 273.15 degree Celsius. So this is where the pressure will be zero. Okay, so what happened when the pressure will be zero? Okay, so that will is equivalent to the absolute zero. Okay, so actually, uh, if you want to talk about absolute zero, okay, we actually try to um, get one uh, particular uh, units of temperatures. Okay, it's not about Celsius, it's not about uh, Fahrenheit. We know the negative 273.15 is actually in Celsius. So if you want to convert it to degree Fahrenheit, yes, you can do it. Okay, you can be able to uh, get it this value in terms of Fahrenheit. Okay, because uh, otherwise you want to know uh, if if you already know about Celsius, Fahrenheit is already done. Okay, so try to look at this example first. The gas in a constant volume. The gas thermometer has a pressure of 80 kilopascal. Okay, this is pressure at zero degree. Okay, zero. This one is temperature. Temperature. Assuming ideal behavior. Ideal behavior means normal. Okay, normal situations. What is the pressure of this gas at 100 and zero degree Celsius? 100 and zero degrees Celsius. This is the question. Uh, this is the examples of our questions that will ask you to do uh, uh, some uh, perkadaran, okay, perkadaran uh, in terms of pressure and temperature. So as I said, pressure, pressure, temperature, temperature. Okay, so you want to know uh, as zero is 80 kilopascal, okay. So what happened as 105? What will happen to the Pressure definitely it will increase. Okay, so uh, we should do is like some sort of rate to to, to, to the to the to the to the situations. Okay, and we know when pressure zero. Okay, the value of T will be negative two hundred and seventy three point one five. So what that's that's what they did. Okay, they used the rate. Okay, they use the rate to know uh, the units conversions. So at one kilopascal, what will be the the the, the rate? Okay, based on two hundred seventy three point one five. Okay, they will not use negative. They just use the number two hundred seventy three. Just per kadaran. Ini what what we call it as per kadaran, meaning that because ini pressure zero, here is pressure zero, but temperature dia two seven. 3.15. Kalau pula uh, tem temperature zero, so pressure dia ialah 80 kilopascal. So using this value, so they try, they can get 0 0.293 kilopascal per Celsius. So with this read, they calculate. Okay. Okay, they multiply with 370, which means 370 is actually uh, the value of Celsius, okay, the value of Celsius from here. Meaning that this one is 273 plus 105, okay, 273 plus 105 is equivalent to 378, okay, that will be the value. So, in the end, you can get a pressure that is equivalent to 100 and uh, 11 kilopascal, okay, 11. Okay, so, uh, uh, so that, uh, the, 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 the knowledge about uh, pressure is zero, okay, absolute zero, is actually, they want, they want you to uh, realize something that uh, we can uh, yeah, actually get one skills, okay, because, at negative 273.15, pressure is pressure is zero. And that's what we call as absolute zero. So what is absolute zero? Okay, uh, we want to compare to what? Okay, so that's why we are going to use a Kelvin scale. So this is a Kelvin scale, Kelvin scale. Okay, so uh, when we talk about Kelvin scale, 
is actually uh, a temperature that uh, is actually a scale that uh, can uh, satisfy between Celsius and because uh, of course uh, in Malaysia we use a uh, Celsius but in US we use Fahrenheit so uh, when we talk about absolute zero we cannot simply uh, get to one uh, uh, designated uh, value okay so because of that kita introduce kelvin scale so the kelvin uh, as i mentioned to you yeah uh, is an xi unit okay xi unit for temperature okay if you can still remember uh where we have uh, the earliest uh uh, chapters okay about a, a basic unit okay a basic unit so temperature in Kel kelvin it's not in celsius it's not in fahrenheit why because fahrenheit and celsius fahrenheit is the regional fahrenheit uh, celsius is also regional so it's based on the uh, where you come from so when you have when you come from malaysia so we we'll talk about celsius celsius and celsius and for those uh, in, in the region of Fahrenheit, they will always use Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit. So when we talk in, when we have a, a, a paper to write in science, they cannot understand Celsius and Fahrenheit at the same time. So that's why it comes with the uh, uh, one particular uh, uh, unit that uh, is actually based on the absolute zero. So this is based on absolute zero. Which means the you know, Kelvin scale, okay, is the absolute zero. Okay, why is absolute zero? Pressure, pressure becomes zero. Pressure zero, and the temperature is two hundred seventy-three. So the Kelvin is quite similar to Celsius, okay, because Kelvin is actually comes from is actually getting from the this value two hundred seventy-three point one five. So how to do Kelvin? So basically, uh, in a good manner, okay. So how to contrast, how, how to uh, put these uh, scales, okay? These three scales uh, or these three units all together. So first of all, okay, you have Celsius. Celsius is at the middle, eh? right? So the Celsius will convert to Fahrenheit, and Fahrenheit can also be converted to Celsius. And Celsius also is indicated to convert it to Kelvin. And Kelvin can also be converted to Celsius. So easy. So you put a Celsius it's in the middle of, of the, uh, the conversions. So if you want to get them from the Kelvin to Fahrenheit, so you must go through the Celsius first and then you come to the Fahrenheit. Okay, and so that's uh, the advice versa, eh? meaning that if you want to convert from the Fahrenheit to Kelvin, so first go to the Celsius, go to the Celsius, and then afterward you go to the Kelvin. Because Kelvin is in a temperature where if you have a Celsius scale, a Celsius temperature, uh, then you add to the 273.15. So that will give you the unit in kelvin okay kelvin doesn't have degree okay remember kelvin doesn't have degree like this okay it's just a kelvin okay so when we write down the kelvin don't put degree it's a shame <laughs> okay don't put the degree just put the kelvin so 275 plus 10 10 degrees celsius so it becomes 283 1.15 kelvin that's all Okay, let's see if here is 10, then you, have, you can add this one, 283.15 Kelvin. That's all, not the degree. Okay, without degree. Okay, for those who are writing down as a degree, it's wrong. Okay, because Kelvin is not a degree. It's not based on, uh, because it's based on the absolute zero. Okay, so if you have a convert to a 55 degree Fahrenheit to the Kelvin, temperature so try to do it on your own okay 55 degree Fahrenheit first go to the Celsius okay use the conversion go to the Celsius and then you can add to one 273.15 to get the Kelvin easy okay easy so this is the comparison between three temperature scales 
So right now, okay, I want to highlight yeah, a few things. Let's say I, I highlight at the boiling point of the water, freezing point of the water, okay? So in Kelvin, the boiling point of the water is based on 100 plus with 273. They just use 273. Uh, but it's actually 273.15. So just use 273. So it becomes 373. Because we know uh, the, the, the water boils at 200 degree Celsius. So you can see here at 0 degree Celsius where the water freezes, so it becomes 273 only because 0 plus 273. So in the end, okay, uh, I try to highlight back. So put the Celsius at the middle. Okay, put the Celsius at the middle so you can go to back and forth to the Fahrenheit. And Fahrenheit can go to Celsius, and the Celsius also can go to uh, easily go to the Kelvin, and the Kelvin can go back goes back to Celsius. And look at the how they write down is degree Celsius and degree Fahrenheit, degree Celsius and Kelvin. It's just Kelvin without degree. Okay, so we may take a break for a few minutes, uh, one minute I think, before we continue with the thermal. Especially if you do have a problem, then please put in the chat box. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So this is thermal expansion. So what does it mean by thermal expansion? We already learned thermal skills, thermal contact, thermal equilibrium. Okay, so this is thermal expansion. So what is thermal expansion? So let's look. Uh, most substances, okay, so substances meaning that it comes from maybe a solid, okay, a liquid or maybe a gas. gas. They okay, expand. Okay, most substances expand when heated. So when we give heat, kita bagi heat. Okay, the the uh, the most substances, most eh, most and uh, not all, eh, most substances expand when heated. The change in length or volume, okay, is typically proportional to the change in temperature. So we can uh, we can understand uh, when we give heat. To the material where we give heat to material again, okay, but never mind. It's maybe a solid, liquid, or gas. Okay, they will expand. Okay, that thing will expand. And but we must understood. Okay, we must uh, understand. Uh, when it expand, okay, it expand in terms of what? Okay, maybe in terms of length, or maybe in terms of area, or maybe we can. Uh, uh, easily understand it will expand in terms of volume okay maybe the expansion will come to the length area and of course volume so we'll look at the three different thermal expansion so first of all is the linear expansion so when we talk about linear expansion okay what can we understand the linear expansion Okay, the linear expansion is basically panjang, length, okay, change in length, okay. So, in linear expansion, they will use alpha, alpha, okay. So, okay, well, how does uh, the, 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 the equations, uh, delta L is equivalent to alpha 
alpha is the coefficients okay coefficient of linear expansion alpha okay times with original length lo and also delta t what is delta t change in temperature so change in temperature you look at the unit of alpha unit for alpha will be k negative one or maybe it's a, a degree celsius negative one see so it depends okay we can see in the, in the tables afterwards uh, the different value for alpha because alpha will depends on the material it depends on each material will have a different alpha okay look so this is some typical coefficients of the thermal expansion okay which comes from the let's say uh, you have if you have lead you have aluminium okay a brass a copper iron steel a concrete a window glass a pyrite glass and a quartz so basically for alpha you can look okay all substances has a different coefficient of linear expression which is alpha okay have different alpha okay every material has its own so don't try to memorize this okay do not memorize this okay but try to understand the alpha will come uh, have a different uh, value so in the real examination in the final examination so if they want to ask you about these questions okay, they will provide the value of alpha or maybe uh, this is the last step to calculate the alpha so you have to calculate the alpha so you have to jumble up all, all the equations until you get alpha and alpha the unit for alpha will be k negative one kelvin negative one okay so it's either two it's either maybe they will give you alpha value of alpha or maybe you have you need to calculate alpha so that's all okay there are two possibilities okay so let's say if you have an iron tower is three zero meters high okay on a 22 degree celsius day how much does it is high decrease when the temperature cools okay temperature cools to zero degree celsius so the difference in temperature remember okay okay let me do it uh let, let we uh, let, let's uh, we do uh the situations uh slowly okay so that right now we are using iron tower iron iron means Okay. so according to the value so the iron will be 12 times 10 to the power of negative 6 so so that's why i'm saying so alpha is not for uh, uh, it's not for us to memorize okay we just use alpha is maybe they will use they will get in the, in the question maybe they will put here alpha is 12 times 10 to the power of negative 6k negative 1 uh, like that Okay, so you will use this T inside here. So alpha, what is the L1, the original? 301. So this is 301. And how about this? We know the alpha contain K negative 1. K Kelvin negative 1. Meaning that the, 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 the temperature, uh, sorry, the, the unit used is Kelvin. But uh, for, the, for this question, okay, they only provide Celsius. So how can we do this thing? So uh, after all, okay, this is the different in temperature. So remember, this is different in temperature. So regardless of uh, the situation Celsius or maybe Kelvin, so we need to find the difference in temperature, not the, the, the not the, the temperature. Okay, look at this or two possible value. Okay, so at delta t, we can use twenty two uh, zero minus twenty two. Okay, uh, which is zero Celsius, this degree Celsius minus 22 degrees Celsius. So you will get negative 22 degrees Celsius. One thing, okay. So if you want to convert it to, to Kelvin, so what happened? The so zero, it becomes 273 Kelvin and 273 
Okay, so here 22 degrees Celsius, it becomes 295 Kelvin. What happened is, so what happened? It becomes 273 minus with 295. The value is still negative 22 Kelvin. Okay, so remember uh, the unit for alpha is K negative one, K negative one. Okay, but for the difference in temperature, okay, difference in temperature, we need to use just the difference in temperature, not the unit. Okay, so it doesn't matter because uh, if we use the Celsius, the value is still negative 22. So if we use the, the Kelvin, so we also use negative 22. So it's up to you. If you want to convert it to Kelvin, then proceed. If you don't want to convert it, because it's just a delta T. Okay, remember, it's just a delta T. So regardless of Kelvin, maybe if they want to put a Fahrenheit, it doesn't matter because the value, uh, the difference between the value is still the same. Okay, uh, the difference in temperature is still the same. So that's why we don't bother about the units in here. Okay. Uh, because we don't have to uh, put the K or C inside the calculator. The calculator only can read 0 minus 22, 273 minus 295, just that. Okay, so it doesn't matter about the unit because it still gives you negative 22. Yeah? I hope you understand on, on, my, on this part, okay? So don't, don't confuse you know, if you want to use a Celsius or Kelvin because we want to get only the delta T, the difference in temperature. And then, of course, the value will be negative 0 0.079 meters, okay? which also equivalent to negative 7.9 centimeters. Remember, okay, in expansion, okay, when I talk about expansion, it's just not uh, heated. Okay, heated means plus. Okay, so meaning that if 301, then it becomes uh, 308.9 if the, 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 the situation is heated. But a uh, cool also is an expansion, but expansion in negative. Also heated expansion, they are jadi positive. So cool are jadi negative so this is the part where or the, the part where the temperature cools so it drops from 22 to zero when it drops the temperature to zero so there will be some expansion but the expansion will be in the ne negative because it's cooling down okay so try to understand on that part when we heat it or we cool it okay look at the value when heat heated it becomes positive value when the expansion become positive when it's cooled down so the expansion will become negative okay try to understand all right so this is the the applications of the linear expansion okay now let's go through to the area expansion okay expansion of an area of a flat substance is derived from the linear expansion in both directions, okay? In both directions, meaning that you should understand from the questions that uh, what types of expansion are we talking about? Maybe it's just a linear. Linear means that if you do some heat to this part, okay, let's say this is a metal, okay, metal, so you try to heat Let's say this is flame. When we hit at one point, so it just increases a certain a, a certain expansion, just a linear part of the expansion. So this is called okay a alpha. Okay, but when we try to consider when we try to expansion in the one. Okay, so meaning that about, okay, at the expansion in terms of two moves, alpha and alpha, so it becomes two alpha. What is two alpha? Area expansion. 
Okay, the expansion of an area of a flat substance is derived from the linear expansion in both directions. Okay, in both directions. Okay, for if you are using alpha, it's just only in one direction. But for the two two directions, or maybe both directions, maybe x and y, yeah, exist. When we talking about direction, try to mention this as exists. Okay. So linear linear direction is only occur to one axis, but for the area expansion, it will occur in two axis simultaneously. So that's why we are talking about two alpha, alpha and alpha. So it becomes two alpha, and the, of course this delta e delta area is approximate equivalent to two alpha e times delta t, two alpha e times delta. Okay, I try to recall back uh, the one that we did on the linear part. So this is this is a delta. So this is a linear expansion. Okay, so delta L is equivalent to alpha L not delta T. That's all. So try to uh, compare between area. And area is the this one. E, uh, most equivalent to 2 alpha. Okay, look at the value. 2 alpha A times delta T. Alright? So now, right now, we go to the volume expansion first. Okay, then we talk about uh, where we do, then we try to do the uh, uh, examples. Okay? So the volume expansion. So what is volume expansion? Right. So the volume expansion will come... Uh, will have a different. Uh, will have a two. Uh, we we can will be consist of two different part. Okay, uh, volume expansions for solid. Okay, volume expansion of solid. For example, uh, when we have a container. Okay, so when we try when we have uh, let's say try to imagine cube. Okay, cube, almost that. Okay, of course it have. Uh, three different axes x y and z three different axes so with three different axes we have an alpha alpha and alpha three different alpha so when we hit this thing okay when we hit the solid so of course it will increase its volume okay but increase in terms of linear with three different okay three different axis simultaneously that is for volume in solid okay as i as i as i mentioned to you the volume expansion will come with solids and also for the uh, liquids and gases fluid okay so also derived from the linear so we can say that delta v is equivalent to 3 alpha v delta t okay is equivalent to 3 alpha v delta t okay so that will be for the solid okay but however for the liquid and gases or fluid this is fluids okay liquid and gases is called fluids only the coefficients of volume expansion will be defined by beta okay we always use alpha 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 because alpha means solid but what happened here? Okay, you know, liquid and gases. Okay, liquid and gases cannot be the same as alpha, because alpha when we have linear in alpha in, in, in solid, so we will use alpha. But when we have a uh, expansion in fluids, uh, for example, liquids and gases, okay, we we may use beta. Okay, so for the delta v, of course. When we put, let's say, if you have a container, a cube container like this, okay, kotak berbentuk kubus, then you throw water, you put water inside, inside the, uh, inside the container. So what will happen? Of course, and you heat it, you heat it, okay, you heat the the box, and of course the box will expand together with the water inside the container. Okay, the water inside the container will also expand. So they in this part they will use beta. Okay, beta V delta T. So for the delta V, there will be two parts, which means first container, 
ان يعني ايه يلا فوليوم فلويدز اوكي ليكويد اند غاسس سو وين يو بوت انسايد فلويد اور غاسس انسايد ذا كونتينر ا سوليد كونتينر سو اي ويل اكسبان تو ثينجز اوكي اي ويل اكسبان ان تيرمز اوف ا سوليد اند فيرست از تيرمز اوف فلويدز And look at the units here. Some typical coefficients of volume expansions for beta, which contribute by, okay, or which uh, for beta, okay, we see ether, a uh, carbon tetrachloride, uh, alcohol, uh, gasoline, and uh, olive oil, water, and mercury will have a different, much much more different beta values. Okay, so this is not alpha, and don't compare this value to alpha because it's quite different, and because of the substance are also different. Okay, materials also different compared to the one that we did on alpha. But remember, when we try to be more careful when you have a volume expansion because when we talk about volume expansion, we may have two possibilities: maybe expand in alpha, expand in volume for alpha, and also expand for volume in beta. Okay, you must consider two things. Okay, maybe you will use three alpha, and maybe you can use beta. So beta, this is the value for beta. Okay, so the unit still Kelvin per negative one. Okay, let's look at this example. A very good example to understand uh, how to do a beta uh, expansion. Okay, oh, sorry, I'll talk about our volume expansion. Okay, let's say you have a copper flask. Okay, copper, copper, copper is solid. Okay. Copper is solid with a volume 100, 150 uh, centimeter cube is filled to the brim with olive oil. Okay, remember olive oil, where is olive oil? Here, okay, this is the olive oil. Then, of course, we have uh, for that we will have uh, copper, copper 17 point uh, times 10 power of negative 6. Uh, Kelvin negative one, and you may have uh, alcohol. Uh, sorry, olive oil zero point six eight. Okay, if the temperature of the system is increased from six to thirty one degrees Celsius, okay, six to thirty one degrees Celsius. So six, remember, six to thirty one degrees Celsius. This should be the delta T. How much oil spills from the flask? Okay, try to remember. Okay, uh, this olive oil have been uh, have been uh, is filled to the brim. Okay, sampai ke atas ni, sampai ke hujung atas ni DC. Maknanya DC penuh lah. Okay, what happen bila kita hit dia? <coughs> bila kita hit, maksud dia bekas ni akan expand. Okay, olive oil yang dia duduk dalam bekas pun akan expand. Ah, uh, dua-dua sekali akan expand. So right now. Okay, we may have to look at the time calculation. <coughs> First, we calculate the expansions of the olive oil. This one for olive oil because they are using the beta. Okay, so you will get 2.6 centimeter cube. Okay, 2.6 centimeter cube. And of course, when we hit, okay, it, it, it will also. Uh, hit the uh, the flask. Okay, the flask uh, is uh, made from copper, so you will use three alpha. Okay, three is a, is a three, but number three times alpha. Alpha for the copper is 17, 10 power of negative six, and times will be 150 centimeter cube times 25k. Okay, 25k is also equivalent to 0 0.19 centimeter cube. So the flux only expands 0 0.19, but the olive oil will expand 2.6. So what's the difference? The difference will be 2.4 centimeter cube. So this is where the olive oil will uh, uh, will will <coughs> spill from the flux because flux is the expansion of flux is only 
0.19, where uh, the expansion of the olive oil with is at 2.6 centimeter cube. So slightly bigger than expansion of the flask. So that's why you can see the olive oil will spill out. Okay, so this is some heat and the mechanical work to use tool. And okay, I think we'll stop uh, for a well, two or five minutes break. Uh, two minutes break, okay, before we continue with the heat and mechanical works, okay? Thank you.
Okay, so let's continue. Heat and mechanical work, right? So this is how uh, they did the experiment. Okay, as they did the experiment or maybe a mechanical work in order to get heat or maybe from heat to do the mechanical work. So just a vice versa. So in order to to understand the concepts of from heat to do a mechanical work and from mechanical work to do heat. So <clears throat> one kilocalorie, okay, kechal, eh, kechal. Normally we we will we will uh, okay, interfere. We will we will realize that kechal is actually is a kilocalorie. Okay, at the back of your food container, maybe is defined as the amount of heat needed. To raise the temperature of one kilogram of water to forty point five degrees Celsius to fifteen point one degrees Celsius, or maybe a one degree Celsius, one kilogram of water from one degree Celsius. Okay, so that is the example. So how they did the mechanical equivalent of it. So one kilogram, one cal calorie is equivalent to. 4.186 joule okay normally for heat okay because heat is energy so we will use joule j-o-u-l-e so maybe you just put j a uh, capital j okay well, you can easily calculate the calorie okay calorie by using a uh, uh, joule okay <clears throat> let's say if you have heat okay another uh, a unit of heat is the British thermal unit BTU. Okay, uh, one pound of water from so 63 degree Fahrenheit to 64 degree Fahrenheit. So this is another uh, a unit of heat that we will we'll use right in the British thermal unit BTU. So we normally don't use this part. We only use a k, k calorie, k kilo calorie, right? So if you want to calculate this one, right? It's a very good example. And it's actually a very good, uh, it's a very good, um, very good calculations to show how much is gained or how much can we burn up, okay, from the, from the, uh, what we uh, intake as food, okay? A 74 kilogram person <clears throat> drinks a thick rich 305 calorie. Okay, the C stands for calorie. Okay, three zero five kilocalorie. Yeah, the C stands for kilocalorie milkshake. How many stairs must this person climb to work off the shake? Let the height of stairs be twenty centimeters. Okay, twenty centimeters. So, uh, the difference between one pair of stairs is just twenty centimeters. So we should calculate three zero five C. Okay, normally when we when we have 305, we always use kilocalorie. So, the number like this, we can 305 capital C. Okay, if, if 305 cal is just 305 cal, calorie. Okay, but 305 kilocalorie means 305,000. Okay, 305,000 kilocalorie. Okay. Kilocalorie to three zero five C. So the quantity of heat is three zero five thousand calorie. Okay, now you can uh, easily get from joule. So just uh, do some conversion. One kil one calorie is equivalent to four one point one five eight six joule. So in the end, you will get one point two eight ten out of six joule. Okay, so uh, the quantity of heat is equivalent to MGH. So what does MGH means? It's the energy, energy, uh, a potential energy, MGH, right? MG is MGH. So, so because we want to know uh, the height okay, or how many stairs, or uh, in the end, you should know. Uh, first, we must know what is the height that uh, this person should climb in order to work off the milkshake because he, he already uh, drink a very thick and rich milkshake okay because milkshake contains a 305 kilocalorie so how to burn off these things 
Okay, for those who are work up, okay, they must know, okay, uh, 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 what is the input of what they eat because they want to burn up me later. Okay, <clears throat> so first they have to measure the height. Okay, using Q over mg. So Q is again says this one is uh, this contains Q over m. M is uh, seventy four kilogram times nine point eight. So it should be nine point eight. So the height should be 1760 meters. So if we get one stairs is equivalent to 20 centimeters or 0 0.2. So you he should climb 8800 stairs okay, to burn off or to work off the mixing. Uh -huh. It's not simple, right? Okay, 305 kilocalorie okay, can be burned out. It can be worked off you know, by a stacking of 8,800 stairs. Okay, because he needs to climb 1,760 meters. Okay, so how to climb 1,760 meters? So he should climb 8,800 stairs. Okay, a very big number. Okay, it's very good understand uh, how to understand the concepts of calorie and kilo can you remember one thing one calorie is equivalent to 4.186 joule the unit is joule. <clears throat> so with that part we, we want to know what is the specific heat okay because uh when we have when we talk about cal calorie so we take one four one eight six joule as a temperature as, as a heat require to raise anything, okay, to raise the temperature of anything, okay. So the specific heat, it takes 4186 joule, okay, uh, or quantity of heat, okay, to, to raise the temperature of one kilogram of water, or one kilogram maybe, water can be changed to substance, okay, one kilogram of substance by one degree Celsius, okay. So this is this is the water and 4186 is the specific heat value for water. And if we use another thing, let's say if you losing using lead, that the value is 128 joules. So to understand that thing, okay, uh, to, to make it general, just use a quantity of heat. The specific heat is what? Quantity of heat. Okay. To raise, uh, untuk naikkan, to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance, okay, by one degree Celsius. Uh, okay, a quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance. Substance can be anything. Okay? Can be anything. So don't use 4186. Don't use 128 joule because it's specific for each substance. 4186 is specific for water. 128 is specific for lead. So you cannot use that value. Just use a general term. A quantity of heat to raise the temperature of one kilogram of substance to buy one degree Celsius. Okay. So the def definitions of heat capacity is Q over delta T. Okay. C Q over delta T. But if we increase, if we put mass uh, in the uh, in the definitions of heat capacity, now it become here specific heats. Okay, so remember we have a heat capacity. Heat capacity is just Q over delta T. Okay, Q over delta T. But when we have a specific heat, meaning that a certain value, so we need to put a mass in uh, in, the, in in the substance, mass in the substance. So it becomes like this. So try to uh, arrange. Uh, try to compare between heat capacity. This is specific heat, and heat capacity is C equals to Q over delta T. The difference is only without mass. Okay, mass saja. Okay, 
Okay, why? Because heat capacity is only considering the, 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 the energy used in terms of temperature, but for the specific heat, okay, it, uh, the heat capacity of an object depends on its mass, really depends on this mass, really, really depends on this mass. A quantity which is property can only be only of the material, not the mass is specific heat. So C is equivalent to Q over M delta T. Okay, M delta T, and remember Q is the quantity of heat, M is the mass of substance, delta T is the difference in temperature. And difference in temperature, again, okay, please use this wisely, okay, make sure you understand the concepts of different difference in temperature for the Celsius, and also for the Kelvin, it's just the same value, okay? Because we want to know the difference between the temperature, not the value of uh, not the unit. Okay, here are some uh, specific heat for of various materials. Okay, so you can see, you can look here that the water have a have, have, have highest uh, specific heat. Okay, value, uh, water can give off or take in large quantity of heat with little change in temperature. That's why when we heat up the water, it takes a very long time to, for the water to boil. And of course, when the water is boiling and we uh, take off the heat, and what happens is the water will contain its heat. Okay, will contain its heat. It's not easily can get cool off, it can cool down easily okay water will have a, a very large uh, heat uh, it, it takes a lot of heat uh, to reach a certain uh, certain uh, difference in temperature and it also take a lot of heat to to cool down uh, okay that's why the value of the water uh, have a uh, have a highest specific heat value compared to other terms and that's why water is uh when we when we, when we compare water to the the one that we use in quality our pan eh? you know our frying pan our frying pan is made from maybe i don't know aluminium or what okay it's much much more uh, uh, uh lower value of the specific heat that means uh when we have a lower value of the specific heat okay it can easily uh heat it heat it Okay, easily heated, but uh, and can easily get uh, can easily cool cool down. Uh, we compare to water. Water is, uh, is very hard to uh, heat, uh, so heated, uh, very hard to to get it uh, heated, and of course very hard to cool down. Okay, so that's why we make these things with the very uh, with the specific heats. Okay, we depends on the specific heats. Okay. So in, this, in that case, uh, we uh, uh, I should uh, try to uh, explain to you about a calorimeter. Okay, what is a calorimeter? So normally, uh, when you get okay, this calorimeter, is actually a lightweight insulative insulated flask. Okay. Okay, a lightweight insulated flask that contains water. Okay, when object is put in, the object and the water come to thermal equilibrium. It means uh, if the mass of the flask can be ignored and the insulation keeps any heat from escaping. It's actually uh, a flask, a flask, okay, uh, but it's very light and wrapped by a certain insulated material. Okay, flask biasa tetapi telah di uh, salutkan ataupun telah dibalutkan dengan uh, insulated material. Maksudnya di diselimutkan dia supaya, okay, it's actually, let's see if you have a beaker. This is a very simple calorimeter. Eh? A beaker, kaca kan? Okay, if you just uh, let the beaker, just to be a beaker, so when you put the water, boiling water over uh, inside the beaker, so it can easily cool down because of heat flows. Okay, it heat flows to the environment. 
keep keluar. So what the dust the calorimeter do is calorimeter will wrap up this thing. Okay, dia akan balut benda ni dan menyebabkan okay, heat tidak boleh keluar. Heat cannot go out easily. Bolehlah keluar tapi it cannot go out easily. So we can contain <coughs> the heat okay, from the water. So when the object is put in, the object and the water comes to a thermal equilibrium. So just imagine, okay, just imagine, if you put a boiling water inside this, okay, so, uh, or maybe you put a, a normal water, okay, a normal water, let's say uh, ambient, at ambient temperature, maybe a 28 degrees Celsius temperature. So you put a very hot things, okay, you put a very hot uh, cube into this part. So what will happen? Uh, this cube, let's say, uh, contains uh, 90 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. What happened? 98 and 20, 20 uh, 90 and 28. So it will reach, okay, there is some contact happen. So there is a thermal contact and afterwards a thermal equilibrium is achieved. Okay, Therm okay, it will reach the thermal equilibrium. So therefore, 90 will go down, okay? The, the value of 90 degree will cool down to one temperature and this 28 degree will come, uh, will goes up to a certain temperature, okay? And afterwards, okay, the like energy is conserved, okay? Uh, so it will reach as one temperature. So that's why we can use this equation. This is the Q of the block. And this is the Q of the water. The Q of the block is M, B, C, B, T. T without the uh, apa-apa, B ke C, duduk ya, dia punya uh, apa, subscript tu. Maksud dia, is the final temperature. This is the final temperature. This is also final temperature. Uh, and whenever you see T, T is the final temperature. So, T, B is the temperature of the block. T, W is the temperature of the water. So let's say the temperature of the block is 90 and temperature of the water is 28. Okay, so you can find what is the final temperature just using this equation. Okay, this is actually a, a, just a normal equation because we use a energy conservation. Energy initial equals to energy final. What is energy final? Q, uh, then of course E, Initial plus and minus E uh, final equivalent to zero. So this is the same as this one. Okay, so that's why uh, that's how they can easily um, okay, explain about uh, thermal equilibrium and how to get the thermal equilibrium temperature. This is how to get thermal equilibrium temperature okay so don't memorize the equation okay don't memorize the equation just get to know how to get the equations right okay how to get the equations right okay uh, that's how you 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 learn some things right okay so this one is a very good example, okay, very good example. Suppose 550 gram of water, okay, at 32 degrees Celsius are poured into a 210 gram aluminium can, can with an initial temperature 15 degrees Celsius. Find the ten final temperature of the system, assuming no heat is exchanged with the surroundings. Okay, so this is where no heat is exchanged. Maybe so this part where we should learn about calorie meter. So you we can we can uh, use uh, energy initial equals to energy finder, like the one we did uh, in the previous part here. Okay, so use this part. So you can try it on your own to get thirty one degree Celsius. Okay. Okay, maybe we can, we can use this part. Okay, this is an example 16.5, a uh, cooling off. Uh, 0 0.5 kilogram block, okay, of metal with an initial temperature 54.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's dropped 
into a container holding 1.1 kilogram of water at 20 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature of the block water, okay, the final temperature, so remember, this is the final temperature of the block. This is temperature, this is TB. This is T <coughs> W. And 31.4 is the T, capital T, final temperature. So what is the specific heat of the matter? So we change a little bit. We change a little bit uh, the equations to get to know the specific heat. Okay, it's just the same equations. Just the same energy initial equals to energy final. Okay, and we derive with these two equations, but we just uh, uh, extrapolate and we want to find, not to find the final temperature, but to find the specific uh, heat of the block. So this one can also be used to determine which type of the block we are using now. If they are using 390 joule per kilogram per Kelvin, then we can uh, match this value to the one in the table to get. So this value is actually a uh, core copper. Okay. So don't 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 worry about the the table because the table will be given to you or maybe they will give a specific value for each question so don't memorize all the values because uh, if you tend to memorize and try to get wrong then you'll be wrong okay so don't do that please use uh, your, your 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 brain wisely okay don't don't waste your your brain capabilities right so use that things okay to memorize the working, not just not not the equations and not the constant value because constant value is will be given for you free, okay, <laughs> right? So this is a conduction, convection, and radiation. How can how can energy how can um, we transfer the energy or we transfer the heat through conduction? Conduction must. Uh, it's directly uh, through a physical material. So conduction, you must touch. Okay. So this is the heat flow by conduction. Okay, heat flow by the conduction. Q is the heat quantity of heat. K is the thermal conductivity. K is the thermal conductivity. A is the area. Delta T. Delta T is the te difference in temperature. L. L is the length and T is the time taken. Again, K is the thermal conductivity and A is the area. Okay, A is the area. Delta T is the difference in temperature. L is the length and T is the time taken. Okay, how many times? So that's why, uh, as I said to you, experimentally, is it found that the amount of heat that flows through a rod, the let's say here like this, so you try to give heat at one point, okay, you give heat at one point, so let's say uh, is uh, have a length, rod have a length, have an area, okay, try to imagine this is a cross sectional area, okay, and we also have time taken so meaning that there will be time taken for this part uh, to reach the certain a certain point so this is the value for the typical thermal conductivities for each material so every material has its own thermal conductivities all right so let's see one of the windows in the house has the shape of square one meters on side. Okay, one meters on side. The glass in the window is 0 0.5 centimeter thick. Okay, 0 0.5. How much heat is lost through this window in one day if the temperature of the house is 21 degrees Celsius and the outside is zero? So that is delta T. Suppose all the dimensions of window height, width, thickness are double. If everything else remains the same, by what factor does the heat flows change? Okay, so remember Q equals to Ka delta T L times T. So K is based on a glass. So 
what is class here? Yeah. 0 0.84 is 0 0.84 times 1, 1 because of the area. Area is 1 because 1 meter times 1 meter is 1 meter square. Okay, 1 meter square. And the difference in temperature is 0 minus 21. As uh, 21 minus 0, which means we have 21K. And L is the length. Okay, it's the thickness. Thickness of the thickness of uh, from one side because we are considering uh, inside is 21 degrees Celsius and outside is 0 degrees Celsius. It's freezing. Okay, so the heat will be transferred just, uh, let's say this is the gap. Okay, this one hot. This one cold. Okay. So we only considering this is the, the L. Ah, that, so I try to imagine this thing. Okay. This is uh, uh, inside window. This is outside window. Okay. So you have two parts inside and outside. So the, 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 the length difference is 0 0.05 meters. And you need to find a T. And of course, in this case, T is not given. Okay, T is not given. The, 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 the time is not given. So you just left the value to T. Okay, but uh, when you consider it, uh, at one day, okay, one day, wait, one day, we need to consider time taken in second. Time taken should be in second. So one day you have 24 hours. One hour, 3,600 seconds. So times with 24 in order to get this one. So the value for heat required is 3 times 10 power of 8 joule. 3 power of 10 power 8 joules. So that's how they, they did the thermal conductivity part. Okay. So... Q is heat again, K is the thermal conductivity value, and A is the area, delta T is the difference in temperature, L is the length between cold and hot, and T is the time taken. Okay. So you can try on your own for these examples, uh, next examples, right? And, okay, that's why it's conduction. Conduction, you must touch. How about convection? Okay, convection is the flow of fluid due to difference in temperatures just such as the warm air rising. So, uh, it's like a phenomenon for the sand, uh, sea breeze and land breeze. Okay, it doesn't touch but it's a convection, is a perolakan. Conduction is a con conduction. Conduction maksudnya sentuh, termu, ada contact. Uh, perolakan Yang, yang panas akan naik atas dan diganti dengan yang sejuk di sebelah bawah. Yang panas lebih ringan akan naik ke atas, digantikan dengan yang sejuk. And lastly, the radiations. Okay. Uh, the part, the last part doesn't matter. It's, it's just a, a, a how to make a mention. So, on the last part is just to consider it, conduction, which here it contains heat, uh, thermal, Conductivity. And then we have a convection. Okay. This one is just a phenomenon and also radiation. This both is just a phenomenon. At least you know uh, what is the uh, uh, examples of convection and Radiation. Radiation lebih kepada uh, electromagnetic wave. Okay, and for example, you have infrared, visible light, and ultraviolet, uh, which you can conduct. Uh, heat. So because you cannot see a UV comes to you, but you can feel the heat. Okay, so the heat will be transported from uh, uh, using vacuum. Uh, heat will be transported. Uh, it, it, it doesn't use uh, perolakan. It tak ada, tak ada yang panas naik atas bawah tu apa uh, sejuk turun tak ada. Tetapi dia menggunakan konsep transport. Okay, and then of course uh, the heat will be transported through a vacuum. Daripada mana? Daripada sun.
Okay, it's just a phenomenon. So you kena tahu lah. Okay, so itu untuk summary untuk chapter ni. Uh, tapi ada sikit lagi ya, saya nak masukkan dengan uh, latent heat. Okay, tadi kita dah baca specific heat. Sikit lagi untuk latent heat. Sekejap, saya share. Okay, so this is latent heat. Okay, of course, when you learn about specific heat, you cannot uh, uh, put away a latent heat. So what is latent heat? When two phases coexist, the temperature remains the same even a small amount of heat is added. Okay, kita tahu uh, in the uh, in the specific heat, uh, yeah, kawan dia ialah specific heat lah. Specific heat, you must have a di difference in temperature. But for latent heat, delta T, no. Okay, tak perlu delta T. Why? Because it's just a difference in phase change. Okay, so apa, what is latent heat? The amount of energy required, okay, the amount of energy required to convert from one phase to another phase. Uh, from one phase to another phase. So the definitions of latent heat can be used in equations, which is M times L. L is the latent heat. But latent heat, you have L, F, L, V, and also L, S. Okay, apa tu? Ah, ini dia. Latent heat of fusion, latent heat of vaporization, and also latent heat of sublimation. There are three latent heat. Sebenarnya apa benda latent heat ni? Okay, so we'll see here. Ah, so I think most of you already know about this. Okay, when you have ice at Z, okay, look at this uh, particular parts of uh, the heat and cooling uh, uh, temperature against heat. Okay, first of all, you have ice. Ice is a solid at negative 20 here. Okay, we start here at negative 20. So this is ice at negative 20. It's solid. What happened is, so the ice will go from negative 20 to zero. So this part, we will use a specific heat. Which means MC delta T. Okay. So every time you see the difference in temperature, like this part. So we will use delta MC delta T, like this part. So we will use MC delta T. But what happened is during melting and freezing point. Ah, So you can see here, the graph is actually flat. When the graph is flat, that means temperature, we don't need the difference. No change in temperature. No change in temperature. Sama juga dengan bawah ni. Tak ada. But this is the part where you must use a latent heat. So latent heat kena tahulah. Okay. Latent heat yang mana. So okay, we have LV. V apa? Vapor. Okay. Latent heat of vaporization. Apa maksud vapor? So vaporization ni. Maksud dia daripada water nak jadi kepada gas. Vaporization. So, dia berubah daripada liquid kepada gas. Kalau dalam kes uh, heating lah. Tapi kalau dalam kes cooling, dia terbalik pula eh. Daripada gas nak jadi cecair, dia jadi panggil condensation. But, we still use a latent heat of vaporization. Latent heat of vaporization ni akan ambil dekat tempat ni. Uh, a boiling point of water. This is especially for water. So you have to understand the graph of temperature versus heat because in this graph will tell you to use a specific heat or latent heat. Because it's a matter of MC theta and of course ML. Satu ML, satu MC delta T. ML latent heat, MC delta T specific heat. How to use that? If you uh, encounter a difference in temperature, then you will use specific heat. So the question will ask you, let's say, uh, 
Okay, calculate the heat require to raise uh, yeah. calculate the heat required to raise the temperature of 0 0.55 kilogram of ice. 0 0.55 kilogram of ice from negative 20 degrees Celsius to water at 20 degrees Celsius. So, maksudnya dekat mana? Dekat bawah ni, sampai dia uh, sampai atas ni. So, everything you must consider. You must calculate everything. So, first, dia mesti ada apa? Dia mesti dekat sini dulu. So, dia akan guna MC delta T. So, dapat yang ni. Okay. Dia akan dapat yang ni. ni. Uh, MC delta T. Dapat satu. Okay. And then afterwards, Okay. Dia duduk dekat mana? Di sini. Second part. Uh, ada tak difference in temperature? No. There is no change in temperature but we'll use M times L. Nak guna yang mana? Guna latent heat of uh, fusion. Latent heat of fusion. Because it happens at zero degree Celsius. It happens at zero degree Celsius. So the answer will be 8184,000. Uh, Sure. And afterwards, to get from 0 to 20, ah uh, kita buat lagi satu, M, C. But right now, cuba tengok beza antara nombor satu dengan nombor tiga. Yeah. And, num and number one, they will use ice. Okay. C untuk ice. Okay. But at uh, number three, they will use C water. Uh, use properly. Use proper C. So that's why you need to understand because in the question maybe they will use every, they will give you everything. They will give you C ice proper, C water proper. Dia akan bagi tahu macam tu. Tapi kita nak guna yang mana satu kena hati-hati. Takut sah, salah. If you are using, uh, 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 kalau kamu dekat sini, kamu guna C ice salah. Uh, 0 0.55 kali dengan 2090 kali dengan 20. Salah. Because this one Okay, this part where the face, uh, the face of the water, uh, uh, the face is actually what? Water. It's no more ice. Dia dah tak jadi ice lah. Dia jadi water dah. Sebab apa? Sebab dekat later heat of fusion ni dah tukar dia daripada ice kepada water. Okay. And then the total heat required is 253,000. Jom, we add everything. Okay, now we may look at the last examples for today. So the steam heat. Okay, to mix steam, you add a, uh, to mix steam, maybe you must, uh, you want to mix to the steam, 5 times 6, uh, 5 point 6 times power of 5 joule of heat, okay, to 0 0.22 kilogram of water at an initial temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Find the temperature of the steam. Okay. So, daripada 50, naik jadi 100 dulu. Dia tak boleh terus naik jadi berapa temperature. Tak boleh, eh. Because, bila mana steam sampai 100, it must reach the boiling point first. And at that particular boiling point, we must use MLV. Latent heat of vaporization. MLV. And then we add to the last part. From the 100 to the last temperature and then we can easily get the final temperature okay so understand every uh, uh, every parts of the temperature versus heat is very good to understand the both cases yeah? either specific heat and also latent heat okay it's very good to understand that things uh when you have a, a, a knowledge in terms of specific heat and yeah? Uh, latent heat. Okay? Alright. Do you have any questions? Ada soalan?